All right, microphones. This is a very, very essential consideration when thinking about what you're going to be recording in your studio. Now, there are lots of different models of microphone. There are also three distinct uh, types of microphone. So this is the way that they're actually built, the way that they're meant to function, and the types of sounds that they're the best at capturing. Let's start by talking about the one that I've already referenced, uh, which is the condenser microphone. Condenser microphones are very, very popular recently. One of the key characteristics of a condenser microphone is that it is very high fidelity and it captures um, the sonic characteristics of whatever you're recording uh, very accurately. Okay, it's a very sensitive microphone. Uh, it can capture a room sound very accurately very clear vocal recordings as well. But the trade-off is that it's also very sensitive, especially to a wide range of volumes. So if you're trying to record a drum set with a condenser microphone like the one that I've got right here, then you actually run the risk of damaging that microphone or at the very least distorting that incoming signal uh, because this microphone is too sensitive to be recording very, very dynamic and loud recordings. So there are large diaphragm condenser microphones, uh, like the one that I'm using to record this podcast right now. Uh, these microphones are great for voiceover, that's why I'm using it now. Great for capturing room noise very accurately. There are also small diaphragm condenser microphones, like uh, the one that I have right here. And this is a very cylindrical shape, and you can see that very small casing on the front there. Um, this is pretty representative of small diaphragm condenser microphones. And these can be better actually at capturing a more dynamic uh, range of volume, and they can still yield a very high fidelity result. Um, so a great example for a uh, time to use this type of microphone would maybe be recording acoustic guitar up close. Okay, so you're gonna get that um, dynamic range taken care of because it's very plucky Okay, it can be a very dynamic sound, a guitar, but it's also going to capture the richness of that signal and um, record it very accurately. Again, a key component of condenser microphones is that they require a power source. So they require phantom power from your interface uh, to actually input a signal. Um, this is not true for the other types of microphones that we're going to be talking about, but just be sure that you have that phantom power capability if you decide to purchase a condenser microphone. Okay, the next type of microphone is a dynamic microphone. Uh, I have one right here. Uh, this is a very common uh, shape of the dynamic microphone. You're gonna see these at like live music performances. Uh, you can record with these in a studio setting as well though. Just as the name suggests, these are very good for dynamic recordings. These are great for recording things like drums, maybe more dynamic vocals, or, you know, guitar, again, in some settings, you might want to use a dynamic microphone. The one trade-off here, however, is that even though you can record maybe an acoustic guitar with this as well, taking care of the dynamics, it's not going to sound as rich. It's not going to sound as high fidelity, specifically up in that high end uh, of the frequency spectrum, those really high frequencies. Um, but, you know, experiment. Um, and you can even listen before you buy online to comparisons between how this dynamic microphone sounds versus a condenser in the same setting. Dynamic microphones also serve a really interesting studio purpose, especially for people who have maybe more beginner studios, small apartment studios. This is a, a small apartment studio. Uh, dynamic microphones actually, since they don't capture room sound, uh, as realistically as condenser microphones. Dynamic microphones can be really great if you have an acoustically imperfect space. And when I say imperfect, I just mean uh, every space is imperfect. But when I say that, I mean maybe a non-acoustically treated space. If you haven't really put in the time to acoustically treat your space, dynamic microphones are great, okay? Because they can uh, record what's in front of them uh, or nearby them, but they're not necessarily capturing uh, the greater space around you. So these can be great um, if you don't have an acoustically treated space. That's one important thing to consider if you're purchasing a condenser microphone. Okay, you might end up having to do more to your room 
if you do want that high fidelity, realistic sound from a large diaphragm condenser like this. You're going to want to take care of things like reverb, other subtle room noises that might actually come through uh, more easily in a condenser versus a dynamic. And finally, there is the ribbon microphone, which I actually don't have uh, an example to show here. I don't own a ribbon microphone. They're very retro. They are an older microphone type uh, used uh, a lot in the 40s and 50s even. Uh, if you think about a 40s and 50s lounge singer, you're probably thinking of a stereotypical ribbon microphone casing. And, um, you know, they're very similar to condensers. Um, they're very sensitive. Uh, in fact, they're the most fragile of all the microphone types. That's something to consider. Um, they're very much like a condenser in the way that they do, do a great job in a studio setting of recording the space very accurately. However, they're not going to do as good of a job with the high end uh, as a condenser does. And they're also going to have a bit of a retro tone to them. Now that just has to do with the frequency distribution that they give off. Since ribbon microphones aren't quite as rich as condensers, they can't handle dynamics really at all. They're very fragile. Um, I wouldn't really recommend purchasing a ribbon microphone at this point unless you really wanted to capture uh, a retro recorded sound. Uh, you know, just buying it for that purpose might make sense, uh, but otherwise I would not recommend it. Also, just a side note, if you do have phantom power capability, and you switch that on with a ribbon microphone, you could just destroy the components in that microphone. So <laughs> really avoid uh, making that mistake. Now obviously there's a lot of variety within those different types of microphones, so I'm not saying that every single dynamic microphone or every single condenser microphone is going to yield the same results. You know, the tone is going to be slightly different. They're built differently by the model. Uh, so uh, I'm just talking about the functions that each of those different types is likely going to serve and serve well and the average tone that you're going to be getting out of those types. Um, now one thing that does vary a lot uh, for all of the microphones that you're going to really want to consider is the cardioid pattern and that has to do with um, what area around the microphone is being recorded. So for example there are microphones that just have one direction that they're recording in. Okay, so let's pretend for a minute that this is just recording the area right in front of the microphone. Uh, if I move to the side over here, you know, the signal would grow weaker. Okay, I'd start feeling like I was far away from the mic in the recording. And as I come center, right in front of the microphone, then you're going to hear me again. And then if I go completely behind the microphone, maybe you won't hear me at all. So that matters, uh, say, if you're wanting to do like a full room recording and you want those reverberations and you want to feel like you're recording the space as well, you're going to want a 360 kind of area around the mic being recorded, a 360 cardioid pattern. 